The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to the Port Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-hosts are Namio and Julia. Woo! Yes, and before we hit the show proper... Uh, considering the timing that this is coming out, this is coming out, uh, well, this will be released to the public, uh, two days after, uh, we found out, you know, that, that the, that the grand jury over there in Ferguson, Missouri, are, are not going to indict Darren Wilson in, 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 in the shooting death of, uh, Michael Brown. Um, you know, just wanted to, just, just, for, for uh, what it's worth here, um, I'm gonna go a lot more in-depth on it with the next thespian talk that's going to be coming up next week um but I've, i felt you know we should at least mention it and say that to everybody that that you know especially uh, brown's family that that our hearts go out to them and our thoughts and everything and hopefully with everything that is going on with the protests and everything more attention is drawn to it and maybe something can get done and and change uh, and if you are protesting stay safe and uh cross your fingers that um, either the uh, federal courts will choose to pursue charges or the Brown family can get um, a civil suit brought for wrongful death. Yeah, Cause, because I've, I've in, in slight preview of how I'm going to go on the next Thespian talk, uh, at least at this point, um, even if you take away everything, if you take it down to the bare bones, it is at the very least unnecessary use of force, at the very yeah. least. Obviously, it's a lot bigger than that, but just at the very least, you know, he should still be, he should still be, you know, in deep shit because unnecessary use of force. He's in even deeper shit as he should be, but, but that's, that's the base there. And, uh, speaking of unnecessary use of force, I don't know how this is going to, no wait, I know how this is going to come in. Unnecessary use of force. Let's talk about Michael. <laughs> Good God, that kid, like. They have completely flipped him and Morgan's personalities. Mm-hmm. And it's just... I mean, like, people are really... People really hate Michael right now, and I kind of... I kind of agree, but I'm like, you know, he's gonna calm down eventually. Yeah. And hopefully he'll stop being such a little fucker. Yeah, there were a couple of points where I was I was just like, Mikey, no, no, dude, dude, calm the fuck down, calm down, calm down. Yeah. You know. I, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it all. I said a, a really long time ago, there was, um, I don't remember the exact context, but there was like a dream sequence or, or something. Someone had like a hallucination or something. And Michael, I think it was Sunny, and Michael was like yelling and he was really angry. And I remember commenting like, God, I wish Michael had an enemy for real on the show. Like someone just arrival, so he really didn't get along with because Michael with a little bit of bite is yeah. kind of fun. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure. kind of enjoying him, like, all laying it to everybody. Oh, yeah. And and Sunny, most of all, deserving it because everything that happened. Ava, deserving it because, hey, she was a part of it. You know, yeah. And, you know, Morgan and Kiki because, well, they kept it from him. And the thing is, I, I, I can give it... I can, I can even understand a little bit more towards Kiki because she... she, she got herself talked into keeping the secret because yeah. i seem to remember when she first found out her first instinct was to fucking tell michael yes it was and morgan was the one who talked her out of it yeah. because this is what michael would do and you know way to prove everybody right michael like yeah. the whole the whole reason everyone was keeping this from him was because they knew that he would freak out and what did he do when he found out? He freaked the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Freaked out, wrote, wrote off everybody that, you know, from the Corinthos part of his, you know, of his family, his heritage, you know, pro, you know, with the possible exce- exception of Jocelyn, though she's not a Corinthos, but, you know, yeah. that particular part, I'm, I'm sure she hasn't written her off. I'm sure he's not written off Jax. He is now. A, well, did, did Michael oh. ever have much of a relationship with Jax? I thought... Morgan and Jax were pretty close at one time, but I don't I don't remember Michael and Jax ever being. I'm not sure, but considering that 
you know, she yeah, that Carly and Jax were married for a while. It wouldn't shock me if there was a little bit of something, but I don't know. Um, well, at the very least, Jax didn't keep a secret. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's for sure. Um, and it's just he went to confront Ava and 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 oh god, at least at least it was him. Yeah, he went to go confront Ava. Ava's gone because now because Kiki revealed everything and, and Ava does not only desperate to avoid Sonny and avoid everybody else, you know, avoid the law or no, she told Silas she was avoiding Sonny. Yeah. You know, she, she's desperate to avoid, you know, getting caught and of course finding her baby, which, you know, I have a well, I understand and I can half get on board with because yeah, find your baby. It's yeah. very, very important, you know, but, um, but she's and gone. And of course, Michael, Michael sits there and blames her because it's like, yeah. it's, she had no idea what he was gonna do. I mean, it's like he's going. He went a little bit into conspiracy theory territory, a little bit. Yeah, he was he was going nuts, and like Morgan at least was there to tell him, Mikey, come on. Yeah. Like ba- basically, he was like, "Stop being a dipshit." <laughs> it, yeah. He did just find out that almost everyone important to him in his life has been lying to him for months about something really huge. So you can't really blame him for being a little. Uh, distrustful yeah. of Kiki in that situation. Well, this is true. Especially uh, since it is her mom. I mean, that's not such a stretch, you know, yeah. that she would help her uh, yeah. escape. And she she had just told Morgan that despite what Ava has done, you know, she still loves her. She's still her mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, and after all of the blowing up and, and, and all of the nearly, Michael nearly beating the shit out of Morgan again. <laughs> I say beat the shit. It was really one punch, uh, but uh, but you know, he, you know, nearly all that happening again. Michael gets away. You know, he goes and he goes to the quartermains and he takes the quartermain name. I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will say this. You know, despite how much of an idiot Michael is. At, well, I I say idiot. Um, how reactionary? I guess might be the word for it michael is acting towards you know morgan and kiki and everybody that um you know this this is something i can firmly get behind because you know what it, you know this this is going to do much more to sunny than shooting him and killing him ever would that's true because i i'm usually of the opinion that that death is too quick for certain things and you know if the if they had written off Sonny just to kill him or whatever that would have been too quick you know oh, I, yeah. you know just you know Sonny needs to see and pay the full consequences of his actions jail time is good you know and he and he and for his part he pleaded guilty because and and to be fair it's it's an honorable thing he did it to spare Carly yeah which and Duke and and Michael I mean he he part of the reason yeah. he you know he handed over the recording for, for Michael's peace of mind or, or desire for vengeance, whatever it was, he's not fighting the charges at all. He's accepting full responsibility. Yeah. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are like really annoyed at Sunny lately, and um, and myself included to a point. But I I'm really on board with Sunny right now. I'm really pleased with with yeah. how he's handling the situation. Yeah. And I I really love what he's doing for Carly. Yeah, this this is something I've I've said it before. I have I'm not the biggest Sonny fan, but I do know that at least ninety percent of the time, what he does is honorable. You know, he, what some of the things he does, he does have a sense of honor, and this is this is him showing that honor. You know, hey, you know, I I can't, you know, I'm busted. I, I they got me dead to rights. Michael doesn't want anything to do with me, so the least I could do is you know give him the evidence, let him do what he wants to with it. And of course, the evidence got over there to Anna in the end, <laughs> and 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 all of that good stuff. And speaking of the evidence, Michael, you know, he, he wanted to hear the evidence for himself, so he used the computer at the Quartermain Mansion. People were asking, why did they have to have Monica listen as well? I'm guessing Monica demanded that she hear it too. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> If I'm her, I I would, you know, uh, just to know. Yeah, it, it's it's some people are finding it weird, and I'm, I, I I at at the point at that point I really didn't have much of an opinion on it. I don't think it was like, okay, you know. Hey, she's she's his she was his mother. I mean, yeah. besides yeah. Michael, who really 
has only known AJ for a couple of years. I mean, he didn't really have much time with him as a kid. Mm-hmm. So it, it almost makes more sense to me. I mean, I know, obviously, they're really pushing this Michael-AJ relationship. Yeah. Um, but it makes so much sense to me that Monica would want to hear that. Yeah. I can't yeah. imagine not her not listening to it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so to everybody who is like, well, why should you do it? Well, we're, we have your answer. <laughs> there you go. Um, oh, God, where else have we gone? Oh, let's see, with Ava missing, oh. of course, oh, Julie. Oh. Hmm? No, 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 back, back, back up Backing just up. a little bit. Backing up. Because uh, when Michael came in and made that announcement, Ashton had been uh, in there earlier trying to convince Ned and Tracy to go against Michael and put Tracy back in as CEO. And Michael came in, and after announcing that he was, you know, going to go full Quartermain, he basically laid into Tracy. Yes, that's so awesome. And it was awesome, and pointing out what a terrible CEO she was, and how, you know, she fucked up, and, you know, lost a whole bunch of shares to Jerry Jacks, Yep. Which puts the company at risk. And then, you know, she wound up coming home with Ashton, who's a moron. And, oh, isn't it convenient that he shows up right now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, Granted he's... about Ashton, but I will say that the shares thing is less about her capabilities as a CEO and more about some very extenuating circumstances. This is true. Yeah, Whereas true. Michael, who had... I don't even think we ever saw him go to college, correct me if I'm wrong, has suddenly stepped into this role of CEO with very little preparation. I guess he shadowed AJ for a while, and all of a sudden he's supposed to be this, like, you know, fantastic business person. Well, to be fair, I don't think they've actually, like, made any comment whatsoever about his skills at actually running ELQ. Like, we know he's CEO, but we haven't heard of anything he's actually done done or like how the company is doing under his leadership i think yeah. ned made a couple comments actually about like he was going to support continue to support michael because he was doing so well yeah and, i don't know and not to I mention the waterfront silly. yeah yeah the, the waterfront front project is another one um that, oh, that right. michael is responsible for you know he's putting the company money into that and you know hey good face for elq renovating yeah. and run down section of town why not <laughs> Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, so, okay. Um, what else has there been? What else has there been? Um, 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 um. Oh, Ashton keeps, like, going around having, like, loud conversations with Jerry Jacks in the quarter main mansion. And I kept watching and I'm like, dude, what the hell? You're going to get caught. And sure enough, he fucking got caught. Mm-hmm. By Alice, who he well, never first, first by Alice and then by Sam and Patrick. Of course, <laughs> yeah. Just, I did I, love I, Alice though. Yes. Yeah, Alice was great. I with Sam and, and Patrick, I I have for quite some time now been very skeptical of Sam's supposed PI skills. Yes, she's thank been you. dropping the ball all over the place. But this week, I feel like she kind of got her game on again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they gave her something with, useful to do. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it did start with like accidentally overhearing him. You know, they yeah. just happened to walk up when he was on the phone. But you know, then with like the making the key copy out of putty and sneaking in and the fake IDs and you know pretending to be a married couple to get into the security deposit room and all that, I was like, okay, okay, Sam. Yeah. You're getting your cred back. With the yeah. Girl. Yes. Yeah, because usually like Sam's all like I'm a PI and then like when she's it comes time to actually do anything she's like Durr. yeah like everybody else who's bad at their jobs in this universe uh, they're, they're only good if the writers want them to be good exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, just uh, but yeah so <laughs> so yeah what did they find they, they, they found in that deposit box um, they found a picture of Cesar Faison and a flash drive, which they were take, which they decided they were going to take back to the Quartermain Mansion. <laughs> which I that think must that... have happened on Monday. Yeah. Well, I know. I know they saw the. I know we saw the um, 
the photo and I think the flash drive also on Friday. So uh, on Friday we saw the photo and then um, like they were they finally opened the box and they're like, "What the hell?" Yeah. And that was a, that was a, um, a cliffhanger. That's right. That's right. Uh, but thanks for spoiling it, Gomer. God. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, with everything going on, the days are running a little together. So. I know. <laughs> but um, but yeah. Speaking of phase on, um, the the uh, feds are are sniffing around. You know about you no know, looking for information on what happened to phase on after he was after Robert and Anna had him in the Windermere stables last year. Mm-hmm. Turns out he supposedly had never left. Because they decided, hey, there's catacombs under here. Throw them in a hole! And from Which, the... Oh, God. Like, I'm sorry. Like, when they did the thing last year where, like, you know, Anna and Robert were, like, plotting. Um, like, I was like, okay, obviously she didn't kill him because he's way too good a character to just kill, like... The writers are clearly going to decide later what they did with them. And I'm like, really? Like, that's the resolution? He's I mean, still in that same room. Yeah, I mean, I could understand, like, if it was, like, further in the catacombs, because from what I understand, they're kind of maze-like, and, and you can do a lot of things with them. But yeah. just in the hole right there in the stables, really? Yeah, and I'm like, okay, you wanted this guy out of your life, and so you're, conclu- you're you know... The way you do that is by making sure that you'll have to take care of him for the rest of his life. Yeah, that, what, what, what was the what was the point there? I uh, don't uh, know. I mean, like, you know, I'm surprised more people on this show <clears throat> don't commit murder. Yeah. Because you know you've got Heather repeatedly sneaking out of a supposed like you know uh, hospital for the criminally insane. Mm-hmm. You've got. Bazan sneaking out of maximum security prisons, like to the point where Anna doesn't even trust them to to take him again. Like you'd think, you know, whatever her morals were, that she would do something a little more permanent. Yeah, than exactly. Leave him in a hole in the ground where anyone could a find him and b be persuaded or paid off or something to help him escape. Yeah, it's just, it's just, God damn it, people. Uh, if you're gonna, I mean, what was it? Wasn't it Faison and Obrecht that put? Wasn't it Anna in the catacombs for a little while? And then I think Anna and Duke in the catacombs oh. for a little while last year. Was, you know, was and it was some, it was something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was like totally in a different mm-hmm. in a different area. You know, you know, people could come and go. It was within like the whole maze of the catacombs, not just one simple hole in the ground. Yeah. You know, that was a little more effective. <clears throat> <sighs> oh god damn. Uh, <laughs> so uh, so a little bit on uh, Franco because there was a little Franco Nina time this week and yes. Franco, you know, you know, he he's he's helping Nina get through everything so far it's like he's talked her down from from just that amount of crazy that she had thinking that the baby was actually hers and he got through her to her and got her to see or at least made us believe she sees we'll we'll see how that actually turns out that yes this baby is not mine what are we going to do (laughs) yeah well i mean go ahead julia i was just gonna say i was a little surprised that they seem to be that he seems to have talked her not just into realizing that the baby isn't literally biologically hers but out of taking the baby with them because she kind of was like oh well then what do we do with the baby like if we're gonna run yeah. away and be on the run like now what where i kind of thought he was gonna get her to acknowledge the truth you know so she wouldn't want to call silas and everything but then maybe the they would take the baby and, and go. Like I, I, I don't see why she still wouldn't want the baby. Yeah. Given her fixation for so long, having lost her own child. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe without the crazy there, she doesn't necessarily want the baby. Yeah. <laughs> Which cause... really, like, I don't know why she would want Ava's baby anyway, because it's gonna be a constant reminder of Ava, who she hates. 
yeah, that that just it wouldn't work. I don't know. I hope I what I hope they do is they return the baby. Yeah. At the very least, and say here. We got the child back. Maybe Franco's plan involves bringing the child back, and so he looks more like a hero. Which I can get on board with that. Yeah. Yeah. I um I think that whatever happens, whatever they decide to do, whatever ultimately happens, mm-hmm. if that baby gets hurt, I'm gonna be so so upset because we've had so many dead children or or close to dead children. The whole cancer yeah. scare, Danny, but. Also, um, uh, Gabriel and you know Jake a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, that I, I just what, whatever happens with the baby, I just want the baby to be okay. You know, even if yeah. the baby ends up somehow leaving the canvas, like like baby Georgie did. Mm-hmm. Um, the baby's my number one priority. My second priority, or you know what I would like to see in the situation, is definitely not Franco coming back a hero with the baby in his arms. I'm sorry. I yeah. don't think that, you know, even if he did come back with the baby in his arms, I don't think that he would be received as a hero after, you know, kidnapping several people and, yeah. you know, leaving video evidence of him threatening Carly and Jocelyn. This is true. But I, I, I'm really hoping that, you know, whether he it's hailed a hero or, or thinks he'll get hailed a hero or whatever, whatever his reasons, I hope he does leave the baby behind. Yes. In Port Charles. Yes, exactly. Well, I, you know, when they when they first left, I was like, why are they taking the baby? You know, like, no one's going to come, you know, no one's really going to put a lot of effort into going after Franco and Nina, but they're going to move, you know, mountains to come after that baby. And so, mm-hmm. like... My, my guess is it was an issue of timing. That yeah. That didn't have time to talk her out of it. They just that was kind of... My thought too, but still, I'm just like, come on, Franco. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, so and and the and the way Franco, you know, he talked her through, talked her down from from her big crazy. I'm like, you know what? That's pretty awesome. Why can't we have more of this side of Franco, who's yeah. sitting there willing to to do what needs to be done for his friend? And while I'm I'm sure it probably caused Nina a little pain as she was going through it. It worked out better for her in the end. Yeah. I would love to see more of that side of Franco, personally. Yeah, well, and, you know, I'm kind of sad that, uh, you know, Franco's not going to be as much a part of the show anymore yeah. because they've got him in a really interesting place right now. You know, he, you know, doesn't have the brain tumor excuse, so he's not a sociopath anymore, but. When his heart got broken, his first instinct was basically to put on the mask of the sociopath again and and perform like he used to, because that's basically the only other way he knows of dealing with anything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's still that spark of goodness in him, and he's not a sociopath anymore, you know. He has feelings. He cares about people. Yeah. And it's this really interesting um, new character that's emerging. Yeah, it's like if, uh, people on the show have been, call- have been calling him a sociopath. It's like, not really. Yeah, not anymore. No. I mean, by, by the definition, not really. Yeah. I mean, has he done crazy shit? Yes, he has. Has he gone over the line? Yes, he has. Still not a sociopath. <laughs> yeah. At least not by definition. Yeah, exactly. You know. Oh, and... I, I, grant, I grant you that. Like, you're, you're right. I don't know if it's, you know, this results of the brain tumor thing or what. But, yes, he, does, he no longer seems to be actually a sociopath. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm really nervous about this line they seem to be treading with him between still being a pretty, you know, terrible person and doing terrible things, maybe not sociopathic things, but pretty awful, and then and, and then this sympathetic side. And I know they really like to introduce a character as, you know, as bad or as whatever, and then sort of do this little redemption arc thing. And I just think it's... I don't think every character needs a redemption arc. I think that's, you know, there's really delicious villains that we don't 
need to see that from them. True. And I'm just I'm just nervous about where they're going with him because I think it's it's dangerous to play that with someone who's done the things that he's done. Yeah, well, I mean, and they already kind of like played with that with his relationship with Carly where everyone kept trying to remind her like you do remember that this man like terrorized you and your family, right? You do remember that, right? <laughs> yeah. And it was this really weird dynamic. Yeah, that that is kind of a thing. And I can see, you know, wanting to keep a, you know, you know, not not every villain deserves a redemption arc. Not a, thankfully not every villain does have one like <clears throat> face on. <clears throat> yeah. Helena Castanet, excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, which which we have all of these other villains coming back onto the canvas in some way shape in some way shape or form. We've got Faison, who yeah, it's pretty much a given that he is obviously not dead. And when 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 uh, when everybody went to go look at the stables or whatever, looked in the hole in the ground, he's not there. Yeah. So he is very much alive and loose. Helena Cassidyne alive and loose jerry jacks alive and loose lord ashton at least especially in this case being a villain alive and loose <laughs> that's four villains holy shit that, that's gotta be oh this this is like turning into one of those like i want to say like a uh, um um crisis crossover ultimate universe type things <laughs> I, I don't know what exactly it's supposed to be when there's like yeah. a shit ton of villains coming in and trying to wreak havoc on a, on one particular town I just would really love to see a scene with like all of them sitting around like an office conference room type table you know with high back chairs having a, like, evil league of evil type yes, meeting yes exactly <laughs> yes and the thing is Helena would be the queen over them all oh yes yep. Because she's worked with Faison before. In fact, he she almost practically tried to blow him up when he when when his he had outlived his usefulness to her. You know, she's working with Jerry Jacks now. Uh, who's the other villain? Lord Ashton. Oh, okay. I don't know if she's worked with him in the past, but that that's got to be the way they got Barrett Industries. Because the Ashtons and Barrett and everything. Um, oh God, just yeah. Plus, you also got to remember, it was Helena's husband that tried to freeze the world. Yep. So she's she's got her shit together. Oh, lordy. Oh, oh let's see. Where, what, speaking of Cassidines, um, with, with the whole uh, Fed snooping around and everything, he went right to Windermere. He asked Britt, hey, you know, you know, we're, we're doing this thing. Do you want to – would you be willing to help with the investigation? And her first response was, of course, no, because if her father's dead, then fuck him. Yeah. But then Obrek blackmailed her. Because, Which of course, I'm, she does. I'm like, okay, you know what? This is getting old. <laughs> like, Obrek uh, blackmailing Brit with, you know, some secret that could break up her and Nicholas. I'm like, gee, it's not like they were doing this exact goddamn thing last year. Yeah, it's like, yeah. goddamn it. Yeah, but. Oh. She's so close to being out from under her mother. Mm -hmm. And even, she was almost even sort of gaining the moral high ground. And um, I just couldn't believe when she did that with Spencer, that their little scheme. And of course, now it's coming back to bite her in the ass. I mean, Spencer himself almost spilled the beans. Yeah. Yeah, because he feels really guilty. Yeah, like he should. You know, you really should, kid. Uh, you know, yeah, and it's good. You have a sense of guilt. Uh. <laughs> You know. Shit, but, but I do say as annoying as Spencer is, and I do find him rather obnoxious, he is, what, an eight-year-old kid? Mm -hmm. but yeah. He is an adult, and in that situation, she should have been the adult and not allowed that to go forward, and not allowed Spencer to run away and, and drag her into it. She should have told Nicholas. Instead of, you know, letting Spencer play out this little scheme, and so, I really wish she hadn't done it, but since she has, I don't really feel that much sympathy for her. And yeah. I do really hope it comes out soon, because I, I would like her to get out from under her mom. I would like her to make these better choices. And it's 
she's gotta have, she's gotta start over. She can't keep piling on these lies. No, she can't. And it's just, ah. Uh, but, and you know what? Her actions, yeah, they're not excusable, but she, is it me or is she, like, pretty easily manipulated by certain people? Oh, God. Yeah. Obrek knows how to really, you know, push Brit's buttons to get her to do what she wants, which makes sense. It's Obrek. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And even Spencer. I mean, I mean, you know, like you said, if Brit had been the adult and, and just, you know, you know, told Spencer, no, we're not doing it like this, then, you know, maybe none of this would have happened. But Brit somehow w w was, you know, was able, was manipulated by Spencer. Spencer was able to manipulate her, which being manipulated by an eight year old, even somebody of Spencer's caliber, what does that say? You know, <laughs> uh, she she was had sort of an absent father figure her whole life. Who uh, was, and when she did interact with him, he was pretty awful and didn't really care about her. Yeah. Mother withheld affection. She's she'd never been in love before Patrick, which I think barely counts. I think she was more in love with her idea of him or the idea of love because they really didn't seem to know each other that well, and he certainly didn't yeah. reciprocate. So yeah. Nicholas is the first person, Nicholas, and, and sort of Spencer, I mean, it's been a package deal this whole time. They've sort of formed this little family unit. This is the first time she's had family that she loves, that loves her. And I, and I do, I do get that she didn't want to lose Nicholas, and she was desperate to get him back. Yeah. And Spencer was her, you know, her, her only ally in that, really. I mean, her mother helps her sometimes for her own reasons. Um, and, and she, she is, you know, Brad has become her best friend but I, I get why she did it I wish she just wish she hadn't yeah, yeah. but it I, doesn't make I'm a lot board. of sense for where she is in her life yeah and, and I can get totally on board with that it's yeah. just, wow I mean, but you know, uh, you know the I, whole situation is really contrived anyway huh? because the whole reason that Obrecht decided to blackmail Brit is because they're like oh we can't investigate a goddamn police commissioner for murder unless a direct family member, blood family member of the deceased presses charges. And I'm like, bull fucking shit. That's, yeah. That's what I thought, too. That's what I was thinking. I was like, that's ridiculous. It's a murder, not, you know. But then I realized there's no body. So maybe they did need her permission to, like, start an investigation as more of, like, a... Not a missing I, person's report, but I really without... don't think the feds give a shit. That's my thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. like, yeah, like I'm... I'm pretty sure. Like, well, and it's a, it's she's a police commissioner. Like, if there's even a hint that she might have fucking committed murder, like, yeah. Uh, not and... not to derail the conversation, but mm -hmm. may I point out to you, Ferguson. Yeah, not, good true. Point. Not, to, not to bring it back to that, but <laughs> really, yeah, yeah. Oh, a good police point. commissioner might have committed murder. Hmm. Um, I'm yeah. Investigate it that hard. Yeah. yeah. There, is, well, there, there is that, but uh, you know, in in this fictional Bizarro world, you know, this fe particular federal agent is very passionate about finding answers, and it does like it just. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm calling bullshit because that was all contrived to get to the blackmail. Mm -hmm. And you know what else? I'm willing to bet that whether whether Agent Sloan realizes it or not, whether whether he's in on it or whether he's being played or whatever, I'm willing to bet that this was a setup by the villains to try and get to Anna as well. Either that or an you know, attempt to figure out where Faison is. Yeah, but um. But, you know, I'm, I'm just – I just have this thing that, you know, part of the deal is Sonny's territory. That's where Julian came in, yeah. you know, and then get rid of the cops, you know, get, get rid of that power. And that, then they would totally control the city. Especially Although, really – Especially their hands on more BLQ. Yeah. They've and got then, from all sectors. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, like, if, if they really want to run the town, their best bet is to leave all of the current cops in place. <laughs> because this police precinct fucking sucks, and Anna is a big reason for that. Yeah, yeah, I, I cannot deny that at this point. 
cannot deny it. Anna, you know, if she was on her own, she had no restrictions or whatever, could be the action woman or what have you, I'm sure she would be fine. But with the constraints she has on her legally, and and even beyond that, it's like, you, you guys are writing her like an idiot. She yeah. was an international super spy! It's like, God Back damn it. she was well written, I'm sure she was. But yeah, like, currently she just sucks at her job. I mean, look what it took for them to even arrest Sonny. They literally had to have the evidence gift-wrapped for them on a goddamn silver platter. Which is... Yeah. And it does not help that they have barely more than two cops who keep having to arrest their family members in cases yes. that they should really be recusing themselves from because of conflict of interests. Yeah, e- either Dante is having to arrest his family members, or they call him to come to the scene of a shooting and don't tell him until he gets there that it was a member of his family that was shot. Yeah, that, that's... Oh, that's happened God. more than once. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, you people fucking suck at this. <laughs> yeah, you have Nathan now. Bring him in. I know. And he like, doesn't have that, that much family around. And it's like, yeah, um, why didn't you send Nathan to go arrest Sonny? And Dante to arrest Madeline. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that would have made fucking a lot more sense, but no. Drama, 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 drama. Drop to the drama. Drop to the drama. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, so, oh god, so another, speaking of Sonny's organization, hi Sean, Sean and Jordan, (sighs) they decide to come clean with TJ about what happened to his dad. So, okay, who, who among here called that at least part of the situation was caused by the fact that Jordan and uh, Sean slept together back in the day? And I'm calling... I really had history, I did not realize it was history that happened while she was married to TJ's dad. Yeah, it's like, wow. But, you know. uh, and I'm calling it right now, Sean is totally TJ's father. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know that's going to be the case. Like, the, because otherwise, and, why bring it up? Like, it's, it, it would be irrelevant. Uh, yeah. Otherwise. And, the, like, Jordan's face when uh, Sean was like, oh, yeah, you know, the DNA test proved that, uh, you know, Thomas was your father, and uh, yeah, that was yeah. yeah Jordan was. Jordan was not. like, um, maybe not. I don't know. No. Clearly, clearly, Sean believes that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, my guess is Jordan lied or faked the results or whatever in order to yeah. protect his marriage. Right. Yeah. Which understandable. Still, another lie about that's going to be coming out. I don't know how this is going to go down, but hey, you know. Well, and then I guess the other thing is. Why not tell Sean the truth? Yeah, I, I honestly, how would that, how, how do you, how, how would that have affected him? Uh, I stuttered a whole lot there. Uh, like, like, okay, yeah, you know, you know, dad comes back. Although at the time it may not have been appropriate because Sean just had to kill his best friend to keep him, you know, in self-defense. And then right after that, they got, they got attacked. Yeah. So it was like, so maybe a little bit of shell shock going on. It's like, Jordan's like, okay, this is not the time. (laughs) Yeah. Well, maybe not right at that moment, but I gotta say, you know, maybe they wouldn't have, like, gotten back together romantically, but then they both could have been there for TJ from the beginning. Maybe Sean would, you know, know that the mother of his son was a DEA agent and not give her a shit all the time about the drugs. Yeah. Um, I just so many possibilities. Um, I does Sean still not know that she's DEA? No. Nobody knows no except Anna, and, okay. and I think a couple. Of, I think maybe Nathan and Dante, maybe, but maybe. very few people. But, but you know, speaking of Sean getting attacked right after shooting Thomas, you know what he said was, "I." We were attacked right away, I was unconscious for days, and when I woke up, they told me he was dead. Guess who's not gonna be dead? I'll make uh, a million dollars. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, Ooh, I'm, yeah, I I'm hadn't gonna be thought of that, that too. but you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, Mr. Thomas is gonna show up, because of course he does. Of course. And, and I just hope that Jordan 
comes clean before TJ gets attached, and then Thomas and Sean have a whole new issue. Yeah. To, uh, or, or, or I guess the same issue to deal with all over again. Yeah. But the question of paternity. So, assuming Jordan's lying, which I think we all know she is, mm-hmm. and assuming Thomas is coming back soon, which I think he's going to, Jordan needs to get her act together and fast. Yeah. Things gets yeah. way worse before it gets better. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And... And, you know, as far as her being with the DEA, I can understand her not telling Sean that because, well, Sean works for Sonny, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and, and of course, while she doesn't know that Sonny may not do anything to her because, hey, you know what, Sonny's not pushing drugs, so he has no reason to fear her. But, you know, if with that information, it could be dangerous for her from the other end, yeah. the Jerome's, who are pushing drugs or have been pushing drugs. I don't know if they're still doing that or not, but. Because we don't we don't see the Jeromes in in, in mob action right now. Well, no, true, but that though I mean that was Jordan's job for them, and if she's still working for them, she's presumably still running drugs. Okay. Um, and I mean speaking of not seeing them in action, I mean when have we ever seen Sunny do anything mob like? This That's is true. true. This is true. He occasionally has mysterious shipments of what I'm not sure because Sunny definitely does not run drugs. Yeah. But yeah. he's doing something illegal. Yeah. Money laundering, at the very least, because because I think that's one of the things it was back in the day was money laundering, uh, and and not in the 007 way either. Uh, if you've seen the movie License to Kill, you might get that. <laughs> uh, and if not, um, hit me up on Tumblr. I'll explain it to you. <laughs> uh, uh, no, what we should talk about. I can't. I failing at a segue here. Um, yeah. That's okay. We can Carl in it. <laughs> Jason. Ah, uh, yes. Liz. Ah, uh, yes. Because cause she, she brought him home this week, didn't she? Yep. Yep. Liz brought in a stray. Yes. And, and it looks like he and Cameron are, are they're starting to bond. And it was kind of cool. Yeah, it was cute. <laughs> uh, and Patrick and Sam stopped by. I, I forget what, for what or what have you. Probably a pickup. Or drop off a child. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's right, Emma. So it was just, eh, it's kind of, kind of neat all around. More foreshadowing. Gonna see more of Jason at some point, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't wait till he gets his memory back and whatever is gonna happen there when he realizes yeah. that Sonny, his boss and his best friend, is in prison because he murdered his biological brother. Because you know, both both Jason and AJ were born of Monica's loins here. So, to put it very crudely... No, Jason was not. <laughs> oh, no, that's right. No, they have the same Jason, father. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I got it wrong. They adopted Jason as, as a baby, so... Right, that's right. I, I, I got the wrong quarterman on that one. Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> Point is, they both have, both have the DNA, same DNA from at least one parent. <laughs> there's there's yeah. the point there. <laughs> well, I think even before, you know, oh, what's Jason going to think about, you know, everything going on with people in, in his life. What I am curious about is whether he's going to remember first or whether someone's going to figure out it's him first. That's what I want to know. Because it's yeah. possible that some people could at least at least suspect that it's him before he gets his memories back himself. You know, it, it, there's all these little like hints, like, you know, he recognized the Quartermain's in the hospital, the name Jake seems familiar, the name Quartermain seems familiar. He considered taking it on as his last name before deciding yeah. that would be disrespectful. Um, so I'm just wondering, like, is Liz or, or is Sam or someone going to come to that conclusion and start poking around trying to find out who he really is yeah. before he even starts forgetting his memory? Yeah, okay. You, you know what, what uh, storyline I would love to see out of this? I would love to see Jason start a relationship with Liz, with Elizabeth, um, while he still has amnesia, and then, like, wake up one day and remember that he's married to Sam. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. Now, see, that would be more, that would be better drama. See, wait, I have a question. In this scenario that you would like to see happen, does 
Jason simply remember the fact that he is married, or does he wake up with the feelings for Sam as well? Let's say that he completely regains his memories along with his feelings for Sam. Oh. Yeah. That would, because that would be the most drama. Yeah. Yeah, that would. And it'll be like, oh god, ah! Because remember, in this universe, polyamory is not a thing. <laughs> As far as we know, although, although uh, uh, you know, Felix, Brad, and and, and uh, Lucas, they, they wanted to try it. They they flirted around with it, but Felix is like, I can't do it. Which God you know, damn it, Felix. Hey, yeah. wait, random thought. Mm-hmm. Not about Paul Hamry, but about Felix. What if? Because I was I've been thinking recently that I wish Felix had something to do. Because like that was an interesting little storyline, but since then Felix hasn't really done much. What if? Agent Sloan stuck around and got to know Felix a little better. Yeah. Ooh, that would Slo- well, what, is Sloan gay? I don't know. Do we, Why, do we, do we care? Mean, no. <laughs> true. true. <laughs> Why do we? Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah, the, the, I was thinking that of the romantics part, point. It's like, hmm. Because, I mean, if he's going to stay around, if he's going to stay in town and be like, relevant to the plot, uh-huh. he's going to need something to do besides, you know, investigating Anna or, you know, based on his disappearance or whatever. Yeah. So, he needs to have maybe a little romance on the side. There you Although, go. Although, we're, we're, were you guys noticing that, like, it feels like there might be a romantic history between Anna and Sloane? Oh, I'm pretty sure there has been. The way they the way they were making eyes at each other? Yeah, at some point, I'm sure there was. <laughs> Which, I'm like, uh, you know, Duke is gonna get out of, get out of jail and, like, they seem to be pushing, like, Lucy and Duke, which I'm like, uh, uh, oh dear. I mean, you know, I, think, I think that'll be short lived, even if that does go somewhere, because I think they're definitely hurting Scotty and Lucy back towards each other because Scotty and Lu- uh, Scotty and Bobby, I mean, are falling apart. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, prosecuting your girlfriend's daughter, you know, you know, is going to do that. You know, regardless of whether it's and right your son or not. Attacking your girlfriend's daughter. Yeah. Also, that's a bit of a damn problem. Yeah, it does a little bit. Yeah. Although, really, like, I don't think that Bobby has a right to be as angry at Scott as she is about those things. Because I mean, he's just she... doing his goddamn job and he doesn't know anything about Franco. Yeah, but yeah. she's a mother, so I don't think. Yeah. logic necessarily has to enter into it. You know what I mean? Like, if that's her yeah. daughter. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter if he's right or if he's wrong. Yeah. No. Which, but it's, you know, and I, I don't know if I said this back when Scott chose Bobby over Lucy, but I'm like, fuck you, Scott, at that point. Because it's like, you broke up Lucy's marriage. Yeah. Like, yeah. deliberately almost. Like, oh, you... Yeah. In front of a crowd of people! Like, you fucking owe her at that point. I'm sorry, because, you know, she was saying no to you, and you kept pursuing her, and in the course of that, broke up her marriage. And yeah. I was you... saying, like, I was yeah. really rooting for them. Like, I really like Scotty and Lucy for each other. And yeah. they've got kids together, they have a history, like, they have this really great friendship to build on. And I was, I was really upset when he fucking picked Bobby. So I'm, I'm not glad at the way Scotty and Bobby exploded because, you know, I'm really, you know, upset in Carly's behalf and whatnot in that whole situation. But I'm glad that it's kind of demolished that relationship. Yes. So I'm yeah. hoping Scotty and Lucy will get back together now. Yeah. One thing, you know, when, when both Scott and, and Bobby and Lucy and all of them were, were having the thing and... Lucy and Bobby were like, you need to choose. That that whole scene, it still sticks out of my mind. Where Scott is just trying to get to goddamn work, and they're like, no, you need to decide. Try fucking now. And it's like, pressure much? Yeah. Go to the fucking how about, DA. How about avoiding the issue much? There's that too. I'm not going to say he's not doing that, but there are certain times where, you know, you need to put the issue aside. Yeah, he avoided the issue in other circumstances, and he really shouldn't have. I can get that. But it's like that one scene. That one scene is like, Ladies, let the man get to work. Deal with it after. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I'm i kind of torn on that one because he'd been stringing both of them along for quite a while at that Way point. Too long. 
I, I, I kind of, at that point, agree with their decision to corner him and be like, for the love of God, make a choice. You know, shit or get off the pot, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I can see that. I can see that. Maybe, and it could have just been a, a, a problem with the writing, because it's like, the way it's set up, like, especially if, if somebody's going in there fresh, they're going to think, wait, what the fuck? Yeah. But, <laughs> so it's like, ah! So I was going to say, go, going, going into GH fresh for anyone is going to be a kind of a what the fuck. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? That's where we have this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, ah, oh, yeah, so, uh, um, where, where, where else have we gone? Um, we, we have, we have talked about Scott and, and, and the thing there, and hey, he accepted the guilty plea, which Sonny, I, I will say, Sonny made the deal against Diane's wishes, I believe. Yeah, yeah like, he didn't no, no, even no. he didn't even let her be there during the conversation. Like yeah. she was so pissed at him. Like, <laughs> yeah. Now, do we do we know for sure was Duke included in the deal? Because we know um, Harley was. Yes. Uh, um. The Duke Duke just had already been taken to Pentonville, so presumably they're gonna go get him and release him. Okay. Yeah. I just I was a little worried that Sonny might have like forgotten to include him as part of the plea deal, and I was gonna feel <laughs> so bad for Duke just like languishing away in prison. Yeah. So, so and and again, like I like I said earlier, that is more of an honorable thing for him to do. So that that does gain a couple of points. But with everything else that Sonny has done, it's he's still working from a big deficit for me. <laughs> uh, you know. Oh, God. Uh, Julian. Damn. Yes, Julian. Julian Alexis. Yes, because with Ava's disappearance, who do they haul in right off the bat? Fucking Julian, which, okay, yeah, I can understand because, you know, he's her brother and he has, you know, he would have an interest in hiding her, that sort of thing. So I can understand that. And then Anna puts him in the lockup for two days. Because... Which, and, and I'm just like, okay, you know, if you want to avoid corruption charges, this is not the way to do it, Anna. Because <laughs> you admitted to Julian's face that you're reasonably sure he has nothing to do with Ava's disappearance. And basically that you're locking him up out of spite. Yeah, that, that's like, no, you don't do that. I, I know the hi I know their history. I know that in their past, Julian did some horrible things to her and to Duke. But at, at the same time, you know, you know, you are a, an officer of the law. You are the police commissioner. You know, you cannot let your personal feelings get in the way. I've left, you know, I know the the concept of um, you know decorum and professionalism is really foreign to this series but come on Anna yeah <laughs> you can try I mean there are there are, there will be a time where she could legally put him in there and and, and Julian is, is ready to tell Alexis everything but he's not gonna tell Anna anything because he's like fuck you yeah I mean <laughs> I mean, especially nowadays. Hell, hell, let me have a phone. Sorry about that. <laughs> All good. <laughs> uh, uh, um, be before Alexis, really quick, I just want to say about Olivia's scene with Julian. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Such a nice moment for her, because I think they've been a little, like the writers, I mean, have been maybe a little unsure of what to do with Olivia lately. She's just been kind of orbiting Sunny, and... You know, then she's kind of started to have this thing with Ned, which has been so slow to start because he's still sort of dating Alexis. So, and I just thought this was a really, really nice moment for her to shine, for her to demand answers on her cousin's behalf, for her to learn that Ava was the one who had shot both Connie and Olivia herself. Yeah. yeah. I just, I just really like Olivia, and I'm and, glad yeah. she's having this moment where she's like learning and to, to, to Julian's credit like he was listening to her mm -hmm. and he was like genuinely shocked about Ava being the one who killed Connie and you know, he was you know really nice to Olivia 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, he's, and I'm trying to think, okay, wait, I wasn't sure if Julian knew for sure. I, I think he knew that, I mean, obviously he knew that Ava shot Olivia trying to get to Franco. Yeah. But I wasn't quite sure if he knew that, that, um, uh, oh God, what was it? What was that it? That Ava shot Ava. Connie. Yeah. Yeah. And I think all I knew, I think all he knew is that Ava had something on Sonny. He just didn't know what, yeah. you know, beyond that it was a recording. That might that might have been all he knew. So, because because when he mentioned that, I'm like, wait, you know, and then and then thinking about it, especially just now, I was like, eh, maybe he didn't know. No, so. no, I'm pretty sure that she didn't tell him because you know she did a masterful job of covering her tracks, and really the only person who suspected her was AJ. Yeah, and well, he was right to suspect, and he yeah he put on the recording, so yay. <laughs> The one kink in her plan. <laughs> and she didn't even know until after he was dead. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, lordy. So, um... Oh, oh, Luke. Uh, oh, my God. Luke's scenes were so amazing this week. I was telling you I was, like, clip mining. And, um, like, pretty much all of Luke's scenes had, like, a really amazing moment. I think my favorite one is when he, like... He, like, does the Hulk scream and, like, rips out of his uh, straight jacket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Rawr! I called that clip Luke Smash. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Smash. <laughs> yes. it's, like, it's like, I call it basically Luke getting his heroic resolve. Yeah. And he's like, you know, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Uh. <laughs> and as, as he gets the door open, he manages to... To get the door unlocked, you know, because even you know, well, there's a, good, there's a reason why they put people in a straight jacket, I guess. Yeah. Or, or without other certain implements. Um, yeah, they could they could pick that lock pretty easily. When he does, he looks right at himself. Oh, done, shit. done, done. And there's all of this talk about you know, because uh, when Sam and uh, Patrick went to the went to the bank they did the cover story with lord ashton about them being married fake ids and everything and after lord ashton had left and they found out everything we didn't hear about where he was until you know you know until later on and suddenly we don't hear about lord ashton but we see this fake luke which makes me think that lord ashton is masquerading as luke i don't know you know I Convinced. Yeah. But I think it's plausible. Yeah. It would just kind of depend because, like, Lord Ashton is, like, scrawny compared to Luke. Luke's pretty scrawny. He's tall. Yeah. yeah. Both of them are tall, kind of lanky. Faison is not. I, I don't think. He's not as tall, I don't think. I seem to remember Faison being shorter than Luke. I think we're also. For potentially forgetting that KH does not necessarily under operate under the, you know, laws of logic or physics. Yeah. This it's is true. true. Well they yeah. do have magic mags masks that can turn you into another person. Yeah, exactly. this is true. This is very true. Oh, so we got the last about minute and a half left. Um, I'm still banking on the fake Luke being Lord Ashton. I've seen comments going around um, you know, saying that, oh, it's Faison, it better be Faison, if it's not Faison, I'm gonna be all so pissed. It's like, Faison's been done! Yeah, um, Faison, like, wh whoever is under the mask has been planning this for years. It's not Faison. And, and if it was, if it, if you still think it maybe is Faison, mm -hmm. think about it. Because Faison is obsessed with Anna. We know this, we've been told it time and again. Anna just talked all about it this week, recounting the history. This fake Luke has been creeping on anything in a skirt, uh, most yeah. specifically Kiki. <clears throat> yeah. If it was Faison, he would not have been assaulting Kiki and 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 hitting on women left and right. He would have been focused on Anna from the get go. And we didn't see yeah. any of that. Yeah, pretty um, much. I saw someone was saying, um, suggesting it might be Bill Eckert. Ooh, I don't know who that is. Uh, He's Luke's... an identical distant cousin of Luke's, I think, mm -hmm. from 
Okay. Yeah, back in the 90s, back when the original cartel plotline was going on. Because <laughs> I'm calling this like Cartel the Second, because because a lot of the key players are the same. You have Lord Ashton, you have Cesar Faison, you've got Jerry and Helena in this one as well, which they weren't in the original one. I think the original one, uh, I want to say it was Paul Hornsby or whoever it was in the original iteration, but... And then they wanted to take control, run drugs through Port Charles, take control of ELQ, you know, neutralize the police force, which... GH for using plot lines? I know, right? What? <laughs> Shocking. I'm I just, know, right? I'm just waiting for them to reuse the Freeze the World one. <laughs> that would I be amazing. Say, you because... really like that one, don't Someone you? Someone should do. totally, like, find it in a basement or something. That would be amazing. Well, that you would... know, they did just bring back the Ice Princess. Not too yeah. long ago, so anything's yeah. possible. Oh yeah, and and oh wait, with Helena back, who who's to say that Victor and Stavros won't make a return? Mm -hmm. Maybe even Stefan someday. Yeah, I, not that he's a villain, but speaking yeah. of resurrecting Cassidines. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing Stefan again, because from what I remember of him, especially when Stavros first came back, you know he's decent, at least a half decent guy, or he turned oh, yeah. into a half decent guy. He's the one who's responsible for Nicholas turning out decent. Yeah. So I would definitely say he's a decent guy. Oh yeah. I mean he's had, I mean he's had his more villainous moments. I mean especially when he first got there. You know I, I think he was working on a computer virus or whatever that would allow him to gain control of like the world's banks or whatever. But beyond that, I haven't seen much villainy out of him. At least not from what I've seen or what I've read even. Villain or no, I would just die to have Steven Nichols back on the screen. Yeah. Great as as Stefan, and fantastic on Days of Our Lives as well. I just love Steven Nichols. Yeah, he he is he's pretty damn good. Oh, so with that, we are about at time for this week. Uh, we're not going to be having one next week because this current week is just three days, and I don't know how well we're going to have, you know, pull out an hour out of just three days of show. Some of which, admittedly, got a little bit spoiled on, and I do apologize on that. <laughs> because, yeah, you know, I... Shame, shame and condemnation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, to be fair, we usually do these on uh, Monday before we can even yes. see the show, so... So this week was a little bit off. Um, but where was it? Where was I? Um, yes. Uh, so next show will be in two weeks. Um we'll have like a week and a half worth of show to talk about and next month is also the red ribbon reviewers month um which we'll get into a little bit more about that if you want to find out more uh, i believe it's red ribbon reviews wordpress.com if you want to find out more information about that if you are a fellow producer uh if you do podcast reviews what have you and you want to take part go to the web go to that website red ribbon review red ribbon reviewers wordpress.com and check it out for yourself you see how you can get involved um i actually know the guy who uh, who's running it and he's a decent guy and he's he's what been wanting to keep this alive we've been doing this since uh 2010 um, but we'll go get into a little bit more next next time, uh, as it will be in December and it runs all through December. Uh, so again, um, just go check that out if you're a producer and you want to get in, get involved with that. Um, but in the meantime, thank you for listening. If we wanted to find Julia on social media, where could we find her? That's uh, gh hyphen musings .tumblr .com. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe if you're traveling. Yes, and where could we find Namio? Uh, I am on Tumblr, uh, Namio's Corner, Twitter, uh, at Naomi Washburn, and the fabulous RTGomer.com. What? And if you want to find me on social medias, you can find me on RTGomer.com and NerdVice.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Gomer21XX, and everything else is in the, in the post-show bumper. <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you guys for listening. Again, have a happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe while you travel all of that good stuff, and we will see you guys in two weeks. Uh, and until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio and Julia, signing off. 
Support Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is The Complex by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly patron-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.